It's interesting because if you look at that list of products, the intuitive product is really an MRP system, repetitive product based DTR is for plastics, but in Compix and Relevant, when they were at their peak, they were yeah. very substantial project management here. Growing a business requires a holistic approach that extends beyond sales and marketing. This approach needs alignment among people, processes, and technologies. So if you're a business owner, operations, or finance leader looking to learn growth strategies from your peers and competitors, you're tuned into the right podcast. Welcome to the WBS Podcast, where scalable growth using business systems is our number one priority. Now... Here is your host, Sam Gupta. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the WBS Podcast. I'm Sam Gupta, your host and principal consultant at independent ERP and digital transformation consulting firm, Elevate IQ. Do you know an ERP system that is designed for manufacturing but is not from Infor or Apicor. Do you know an ERP system that may not support as many layers or bonds that Infor or Apicor systems might be able to support? Do you know an ERP system that might struggle with diverse business models such as a business that might do both construction and distribution? Do you know an ERP system that has a very similar look and feel to Infor? If you have guessed Aptine made to manage, then you are right. In today's episode, we invited a panel of industry experts for a live discussion on LinkedIn to conduct an independent review of Aptine made to manage capabilities. We discussed many grounds, including its similarity in look and feel with Infor. Finally, we covered its palm structure, traceability, costing layers, and technology. With that, let's get to the conversation. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's show. And if you are joining for the first time, this is part of our industry series for which we meet every Tuesday at 5.30 p.m. Eastern. We review one vendor or the solution. Today, we are going to be reviewing solution called Aptine uh, Made to Manage, and they used to co- be called Made to Manage before Aptine acquired them. So now they are Aptine Made to Manage. So we are going to have a lot of fun discussing that. Before we do that, we are going to start with uh, everybody's intros. If you don't know me, Sam Gupta, principal at Elevate IQ. Elevate IQ is the independent ERP and digital transformation consulting firm. On that note, I am going to move to Andy for his intro. Jeez, thank you so much for inviting me, Sam. My name is Andy Pratico. I've been involved in ERP software for small to mid-sized manufacturers all my life. And uh, I've worked all over North America. And uh, I've got a very strong familiarity with the Aptian made to manage product. So it should be a, a fun Fun episode. Yeah, and I am definitely curious to hear those stories. So we are going to have a lot of fun. Thank you so much, Andy, for being here. If you are in the audience and joining for the first time, make sure you guys post your questions and comments. We typically try to cover them during the show. If we run out of time, we'll make sure that you your answer. On that note, Andy, I am going to start with the quick brief in terms of my understanding of the solution, where with the sort of fit in the value chain. We are also going to review the corporate strategy for Aptin. I guess we have done, I don't know how many episodes that we have done for quite a Ab- few. Aptin, quite a few, right? Yeah, uh, you know, there's more. They have more that we haven't just done, but the list goes on for a long ways. Exactly. I think they I probably, have, for. Yeah, they probably have the similar number of products as, uh, you know, in four Apicor. Apicor has a lot. They have a lot of yeah, products. Yeah, they do, but they don't, they really don't push many of them. Whereas, Aptian tries to push them all at one time or another. It's- so Apicor has a very different... In fact, I mean, you should have been in the last session, to be honest, when we reviewed this track. Okay. Oh. So Apicor is not pushing. Their products are so unique in some cases. Apicor, right. I'm talking this about track, Apicor. For example. Right. <laughs> that customers are actually pushing them. <laughs> yeah. um, so it's very interesting the way Apicor has acquired. Aptian, and so I'm actually going to review the, the corporate strategy for Aptian, right? And their corporate strategy is very unique as well. The way they are growing, in fact, they have had a recent event. And Andy, I don't know if you followed that or not. They were with Vista Equity, that, that is the private equity company. Obviously, they are humongous. I believe they are from, they are a Swedish company. So from Sweden, okay? They have a lot of different companies in their portfolio. They had Aptine 
I believe for 10 years and I think they got Epstein when Epstein was really struggling financially. So they sort of overhauled Epstein significantly. But 10 years is a very long time in general for any company, especially when you are talking about private equity world. They yeah. are quick cash out guys. Uh, you know, five years well, usually, ago. You know, back in the 1990s when Battery Ventures first purchased. Yeah. They hung on to it for a, quite a while. Yeah. But but usually you're right. Usually I try to flip. Exactly. And honestly speaking, I think there is a little change in the Vista equity strategy as well. They are doing a lot of shuffling and we have seen the shuffling with the, some of the other products as well. So mm. in this particular case now, Vista got out. So obviously there are going to be changes overall in how Epstein is going to be positioning themselves. Because now the new private equity, what they are going to be doing, they are going to be looking at the next phase of growth for Epstein, which is going to be very different. Now, let's review what they had done, let's say, in last night. So their primary strategy has been coming from some regions in, in Europe. Okay, Europe has been their major region, which is kind of shocking because... Europe is already very crowded in general with the LPs. Very <laughs> I mean, crowded. My understanding of Europe market was by default, everybody would go to SAP, right? I mean, there is no competition there. Uh, you know, that was my understanding of the European market. But in fact, I mean, the European market has become far more competitive than the US market at this point of time. You have uh, your SAPs of the world. You have IFS. Um, you have Unit 4. Aptine is doing very well. Acumatica is trying to penetrate. So, so overall, I think Europe market is getting a lot more competition. So what these guys had done, these guys had actually targeted very specific patches and Europe also has different regions inside Europe and they sort of work in tandem the way these markets work. So for example, if you talk about DAC market and that is going to be your um, uh, Deutschland, I guess, Netherlands, uh, you know, Austria, Hungary, uh, and uh, what else I'm missing here? And Czech as well, right? So, so those four, I guess, you know, they go together. Uh, and DAC market in general is very, very, very unique. It's a fast growing market. So they have acquired a lot of different companies in that market. Now, overall, from the Epstein perspective, they were targeting these micro geos the way uh, Apicor likes to. They like to go after the trade groups, buying groups. That's how Apicor works, right? Apicor is primarily, in my mind, they are very North American. Epstein has a very different approach. Not, they, what, what did you say, Seth? They're not uh, what? Apicor is primarily a North American company is what I was trying to say. Okay. Right. And Apicor, the way they like to work is they like to go after the specific trade groups or yes. buying groups. What inside a great the strategy. Industry. Exactly. 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 And that's how Apicor likes to promote their products. They are so deep. They are integrated so deep inside these buying groups that none of the other products are going to work the way Apicor products are going to. So that's their strategy now. If you look at Aptine, Aptine is very interesting, right? So what they like to think is, you know what? If you go outside of your developed country's market, so this is going to be a very small country, okay? In that, what are your options, okay? You are either going to get mom and pop or you are going to get those vanilla ERPs, which is going to be SAP, Microsoft, typically, and then you have to do a lot of development. Cispro is a South African company. I mean, they probably, in general, I don't know how much penetration they have in the other markets. Sure, North America, obviously, they are very well known. There's no question about that. But overall, if you look at their documentation, that's going to feel very South African in general. No question. But they do have a strong presence. Right. But I mean, UK and Europe is obviously very different, right? I mean, there's water between them. (laughs) What's that? Sorry? (laughs) <laughs> there's water between the uk and I know, europe i know i know i know i know and if you go to the uk i guess you know those people are going to say okay this is not europe or europe is going to say uh, you know it's, it's always fun there right so yeah. uk is great i mean you know but uh, it, europe market is very different overall no, from the erp I perspective agree. I agree. right so yeah so unless you are talking about those major five market right there are not a lot of options so for example let's say if you talk about in fact i mean Australia oh, is very strong in europe yeah, because that's an European company. It's not supposed I to be know. North American company. <laughs> <laughs> but Odoo, in general, I mean, Odoo, honestly speaking, in my mind, it's uh, it's more of the accounting software, okay? They are really strong sure. in accounting. They yeah. have a little... Sure. So that's why, I mean, they are probably localized and globalized in roughly 55 countries, okay? So they have very similar wow. strategy, yeah, as NetSuite, especially in the cloud. NetSuite is, is very well localized and globalized as well, but the operational functionality is not going to be as robust as you are going to find in some of these. Uh, so, off the shelf, correct. 
Exactly, exactly. So Aptine, you know, their target market has always been food and beverage, uh, you know, as well as the process manufacturing industries. Uh, you know, the food and beverage, direct to consumer is always their primary target market in general, the way they like to think, the way their acquisitions are. Okay, so mid to manage is sort of our ball in their court. Okay, I don't know why they have discrete manufacturing product. In my mind, when I look at Aptine, I'm always thinking you are food manufacturing shop, you are a process manufacturing. Why are you doing this manufacturing? If your strategy is really going after all of those micro verticals, sure. You're talking like, about Gcom, is that right? Uh, Gcom is with ECI. Okay? Oh, I got it mixed up. I'm sorry. You're right. Yeah, Gcom is with ECI. Aptine has a lot of different process manufacturing, food and beverage, as really? well as a lot of retail products. Wow. That's what Aptine is really good at. For example, hmm. if you look at... And, Aptin has done the similar thing overall from the company perspective. It's a very similar strategy as as in four, where they are trying to integrate a lot of different products together. Okay, they have an IPS and they are trying to integrate all of them from the financial perspective. Financial guys got in the room and they said that you know what, I am going to create really integrated company. That's what Aptin has done. But their bread and butter has always been in that food, chemical, process centric industries. If you look at the number of product lines they have this, this for these markets, you are going to look at Process Pro, Produce Pro, okay, and they have a lot of different. Oh, those are all Aptine products, are they? Yeah, they oh, are. Oh well, Aptine. sure. That Process Pro has been around forever. Yeah, so Process Pro, uh, you know, Aptine Ross uh, is Aptine Aptine product as well. Oh, Rob, uh, Ross is as well. Oh, yeah, well, I, I get it now. Yeah, and uh, they. And by the way, Aptine is a very interesting company in general, okay? So the way Epic uh, Info is trying to approach the market, they are trying to get rid of all of those point capabilities because they want to go as the full suite solution. That's what Epic Info is trying to do. And that's why they got rid of the EAM, which is probably was one of the most successful product for Info, right? But Aptine is different right now, okay? So what Aptine is trying to do, they are still buying the pointed apps. Okay, and they like to promote that you don't have to buy everything. You can just buy one thing right now if you don't need everything. So their strategy is slightly different. So they have a lot of different add-ons that sits on top of your Microsoft Dynamics 365 business. Okay, for example, just food. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. yeah. So there is a little, uh, you know, correlation and synergy there. To be honest, okay. But again, way to manage the way I like to look about this product is it's going to be very, very, very similar to the way in four products are. Okay, so obviously they are trying to catch up with Infor overall from the strategy perspective. That's their their target market and the products, even the products, they are going to appear very similar to Infor. The only difference really is going to be Aptine is targeted for much smaller organizations than your Apicors and Infors of the world. So that's the real difference between what Aptine is trying to do versus what Infor and Apicor is trying to do overall from the corporate strategy perspective. So made to manage is going to be for much smaller customers in general. You know, the kind of capabilities that it is going to have, it's really targeted for those smaller customers. It's not really targeted for very large customers. And now, Andy, I'm pretty sure you're probably going to be asking me, okay, tell me the numbers. <laughs> and I probably don't have a very good answer for you, okay? Which numbers do you do not have the answer? The target market. So you're looking at, okay, is it 100 million? Is it 50 oh, million? Oh, oh. <laughs> You know, Made May to Manage has been around for so long. Most of their, I mean, they don't occasionally are, uh, you know, pushing that product still, but mostly it's being their customer. And I, and I, and if I was to guess, I would can't imagine there's more than a couple thousand, even though it's been around since 19. Right. The number of customers are probably going to be not as many, but right. if you look at right. the size of the customers, that is probably going to be relatively smaller as well. I don't think it will work for more than, let's say, if you are more than $100 million revenue. Oh, no. no. Yeah. Well, back in the 80s, 90s, I'll guarantee they were positioning for that size of company, but not anymore. Exactly. Exactly. So any other comments, Andy, before we start the slides? No, we can, let's have okay. a look. Okay. So here is some history overall from the M2M perspective. So it used to be called Consona you know, Corporation. M2M Holdings was the name of the company. Uh, and overall, I mean, it's a, one of the things that you're going to notice with uh, this product is, you know, it's the core manufacturing product. There are a lot of products in the market that are trying to pretend uh, as the manufacturing products. For example, even if you look at NetSuite and Apicor, even Apicor tries to claim that they are the manufacturing product. But when I look at the data model, uh, right. it's just not there, to be honest, okay? 
But one of the things that I personally like about made to manage, it's really designed for manufacturing. You will see the way the pro product is architected. It has very similar feel as your in four products because that's only how for manufacturing. Manufacturing as well as discrete manufacturing. The, yeah, um, yeah. Yes. I, yeah. That's, um, so not other industry. Now. No, yeah. no, no. So discrete manufacturing in general is very, very, very different. And the, okay, the way they like to see their bombs and data model to be okay. When you are going to be mixing it with, let's say, other assembly shops, uh, you know, it becomes all over the place. Typically, if you look, you are looking at pure play head based manufacturing where you are going to go through multiple, you know, sub assemblies as part of your bombs, and that bomb actually comes to your ERP. Those kind of processes, in my mind, are, are very discrete centric manufacturing, and they typically have very different layout. Uh, of the product and that's what you're probably going to notice in this product is now some more history here overall i guess you know you did mention this background about battery venture so they obviously had them uh but not anymore they acquired a lot of different uh companies in their journey and that's how they grew the whole made to manage uh, offering initially everybody sort of starts as more of a very thin slice uh, of the whole ERP suites and then everybody's sort of trying to figure out okay how can we integrate uh, because the siloed experience is not going to work right so that's how these guys grew as well they acquired a lot of different capabilities and then finally they created a an ERP system okay so I don't have anything else on this slide well, it's interesting because if you look at that list of products the intuitive product is really an MRP system repetitive product based the same thing over don't get over again Ver, uh, dtr is for plastics but in complex and relevant when they were at their peak they were yeah. very substantial project management erp very interesting okay so and you are saying that they may have acquired these things because the diversity get, of the functionality to to, to get the mixed, mixed mode manufacturing capabilities i guess right so initially they probably were doing just the yeah. i don't know maybe make to order and then they had to get uh, the other capabilities as well, because obviously they were trying to compete with companies like um, for manufacturing. Well, when Intuitive first came out in 1996 or so, um, it it had a, a well. It was it was originally a, 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 its own independent company, and they were in, in Redmond, Washington, right next to Microsoft. So that was a huh. big that was their big marketing push. But then uh, Intuitive tried to expand into more uh, custom and uh, ETO type manufacturers, and yep. really failed. Huh. So that's kind of what they brought on in complex and irrelevant. Very interesting background. Any 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 other comments on this these products, Andy? No. No, there's sure a lot of them. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So here is the look and feel. <laughs> Andy, if I gave you this and I didn't tell you, okay, which product this is, probably you are going to guess that this is probably in four. To be honest, <laughs> even the colors are same. <laughs> yeah, well, uh... <laughs> It's, it's it's a pretty common looking screen. Yeah, and this is where you know I don't understand because you know their products are sort of painted blue, which is probably in four products color. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, but their branding is yellow, so you know I don't know how to read. Oh, is that right? Eh? <laughs> yeah, I mean that's oh. what I, most of these private equity companies. That's what see if you look at any of the companies in Vista Equity portfolio, they are all going to paint them yellow. Uh, that's Maybe the first thing. would look too washed out on the screen. I don't know. I don't know. But this is very interesting. I mean, see, even the colors are matching within four. The way Infor products are designed. Very similar, so, yeah. Yeah. So maybe they hired the same people from Infor, and I'm pretty sure there is a lot of movement in general because obviously they are very similar companies in general. Well, I'm colorblind, so I really can't give you a lot of opinion. <laughs> Andy, Andy. So okay, so you cannot see that, right? Oh no, um, I can see it. <laughs> I think it's blue. I'm not sure, but I'll, I'll take your word. Yeah, which blue is that? I guess that's where. Okay, that's so my I, problem. Which blue okay. is it? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, closer to blue. In four blue uh, is what we <laughs> <laughs> almost like your your logo color almost. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Now they are trying to copy Elevate IQ. Probably that's Elevate IQ is it. See, yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> that's got to be what it is. Yeah. Uh, all right, guys. So here, uh, you know, some of the very interesting things that I like about um, any of the manufacturing products, to be honest, especially when you look at the discrete manufacturing products. In my mind. When I'm looking at any of the discrete manufacturing, one of the most flexibility that I would like to have is going to be, okay, how much capabilities are you going to have in the bomb manipulation? Okay, that's where the real play is in my mind, especially if you're talking about really, really deep shops, discrete manufacturing shops, 
that are going to have multiple multiple layers of bombs Complex, so how flexible no. how easy yeah. it is going to be for you to be able to manipulate the bomb that's where the real play is of the state manufacturing and that's where i i think mit manage has done a wonderful job even though it's a very clunky technology in general right the technology is not, not new it's legacy you can see the screens they are not relatively new now andy the interesting part that i like about these products is if you look at some of the eci products and we have reviewed eci m1 now eci m1 had a very different feel because they were targeted for job shops and they don't necessarily consider themselves as <laughs> discrete manufacturing for some reason i don't know why <laughs> but they like to connect and relate with different breed of products then how these products are designed and in my mind this is very discrete manufacturing if you are going to have very deep engineered bombs you probably want this so this is manufacturing product for me if i were running the manufacturing company then i would like to see my products structured this in my mind this is the easiest to follow in from the so manufacturing you, so you perspective you think that the m1 product is not really designed for complex builds m1 has a crazy layout you know one of the things that you're going to find let's say you have people who have worked on five different erp system and you yeah. are trying to hire them right now they are going to get a crazy shock now if you have people who are coming from eci m1 which is probably going to be a rarity okay but in Once general the familiarity sure exactly and then that's where you know it's 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 a lot bigger issue than just how it is designed because this is your change management this is your training issue how people are going to be perceiving the product and andy i was telling you this okay i have sat in a lot of different demos and even after 20 years i get confused okay what is happening oh yeah <laughs> so erp systems are that complex so you are going to get some something completely new it's very hard for people to be able to connect and uh, but i like over that the technology is very clunky overall uh, you know from the mid to manage perspective but the layout is very friendly so one of the things that you are going to notice is that you are probably not going to find even in more complex products so here what they are trying to do is they have provided a view to be able to compare many different bombs okay you sort of have the comparison screen but you can't have the same comparison that you are going to find when you are comparing let's say the feature list of a product okay in the e-commerce world okay so here the screen that you are seeing here you are comparing every single bomb their revisions and you are looking at the individual attribute in my mind this is a phenomenal experience i don't think even the larger manufacturing products can match so i absolutely love this experience what made to manage has done but i don't know how easy it is going to be for them to replicate this experience in the cloud world because now you have different technology they don't work the same way your spreadsheet or the dot net used to work that's why they have this experience but in the new world it's going to be really hard to mimic this okay so overall i am a big fan of made to manage product because of the traceability too. okay it really has much superior traceability comparing to even some of the bigger products for example in four in four is great but it does not have as refined traceability the way you are going to find in the made to manage so the product was designed well and again and the when you are going to be you know when i am talking about any of these smaller products i am typically mad about their design and architecture but in this, <laughs> in this particular case i kind of like it okay right. the way it is designed okay so it's it's a very interesting product of the does it imply how far you can trace back like come all the way to the raw material or is it does it yeah so from the operations perspective it does provide really good traceability from the manufacturing perspective we are going to see in the reviews financial traceability is not as strong because uh, obviously okay. yeah okay so yeah. it's probably was it probably strong for medical device or something like that but well so again depending upon who is looking at the traceability and who what are they trying to debug is going to be a question so for example let's say if a cfo is looking at a product they are probably going to appreciate your yeah. sap sage net suite of the product trails exactly exactly because their issues are very complex when you are looking at very global organization but yeah. let's say if a operation guy you know these these are going to be the guys who are operating on the bombs so typically these are going to be either material managers the operations managers or the shop floor managers those are the people who are going to be looking at the costing probably your some of the engineers as well estimators probably they are the ones who are going to be looking at okay what is the cost i mean where can i find my cost of the material and if my cost is going to be higher for a specific material how can i debug okay what is impacting this cost 
So now you are looking at all of the layers of some assembly. You are looking at all of those overheads. And unless you are using a manufacturing product, it gets really difficult to train. <laughs> okay. And even personally, when I am debugging these things, I struggle. Okay. So I like the manufacturing traceability of this product, but financial traceability. Makes it real easy to, to uh, rec see the differences between different revs, that's for sure. Exactly, exactly. So here, Andy, the, the traceability that you're looking at is going to be for the committed quantity, okay? So here, oh, you, okay, are, gotcha. you okay. are looking at, if you have a part, which are the jobs that this particular part uh, has been committed to? Now, you are talking, number one, it has really robust commitment, okay? That's a big deal. In general, commitment, they are sort of there, but they are not there. Commitments are, the functionality of commitment is not as great in general in manufacturing. So here we are talking about, okay, let's say if you have 8,000 products and you want to find out if 4,000 are already committed to your jobs, then how many are you producing? So that's kind of analysis uh, we are looking at. So that's, in my mind, it's really advanced. So obviously I like made to manage for that. And you know, this is going to be at the individual job level so you can get that traceability. Now, this is the bomb structure. When we reviewed your Apicor, <laughs> it was really hard for me to be able to relate with the bombs because the way I like to see my bombs is, okay, here is my operation. These are the materials that go in the in the uh, operation and you need to have that segmentation. So now here, obviously this is a very sophisticated bomb. There are some things that you should notice. Number one is going to be, you can notice one, two, three, four. And those are the layers of the sub assemblies that this particular system can process. So now they have one, two, three, four, and I believe they have something called star. So I don't know what that star means, to be honest, okay? So maybe they can do, but for the most part, I believe this product is going to be good for up to four, five, six. They might claim in the marketing, you can do 20, but you know, the if you look at the optimum stage of the product, probably you are looking at three to four, uh, you know, that's where this particular product will do which well. Is, which is most companies, you know, not many of them go deeper than that. But, you know, when you look at the MRP runs and the honestly speaking, I've seen even Apicor break when you are looking at really well, complex. You're right. I, yes, you're right. Yep. So well, obviously, well, this you, product, know, you know, you know, this is an older technology. Originally, back in the 1980s, this was developed using cobalt which is very, very fast. Exactly. And in the back end, they might still be using COBOL. You might not see that. I don't know what they're using right now. To be honest, there is there is a case that they, a lot of systems, even Apicor systems, they, in the back end, they are really clunky in general. Okay. Well, not I know they use SQL Server now. They've upgraded their database. But they, it, it, the middleware could still be your, yeah, and I don't know if they are using, yeah. you know, mainframe with SQL Server. I don't know right, how that right, works. Right. But yeah, they, these guys are doing something in the back end. And obviously, they don't share, uh, you know, that information with anybody in the world, right? I mean, see, these right. companies are extremely silent. Uh, because obviously, you know, that's their architecture, I guess. Um, so you are never going to know, even if you ask them, even if you have NDA with them, they will never tell you, even Epicor is never going to tell you uh, what their architecture is, you know, how they are enabling these cloud products. But obviously, they are very clunky, you can guess. Um, you know, if they expose their architecture, you know, then you would know how clunky it is in the back end. Uh, <laughs> but is it going to be a cloud product? Who? Made to manage. Um, yeah. Uh, I think Apple really? is trying to sell them. Yeah, most of the products. It's a very similar strategy. Okay. Uh, yeah, one hundred percent. Multi tenant or single tenant? Uh, from the demo, uh, yeah, they are probably going to be multi tenant, and they are selling really? as cloud. That's my wow. Understanding. They put yeah. a lot of money into it then. Um, they are definitely uh, again. They have very similar strategy as as your uh, Infor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so they definitely have done similar things as Infor, and I don't know how these companies are trying to port these. Uh, you know, code bases to cloud, there's a little trick there in terms of, you know, how much you need to modernize. Uh, because obviously, if you're going to rewrite the whole application, then you're looking at billions and billions of dollars. And these products don't even have that large market, to be honest, to invest that kind of money. Um, so obviously, they have to cut corners somewhere. So they have figured out a shortcut uh, in commercializing these products on, on cloud. And I'm not too sure how they are doing it, to be honest. But the feeling is going to be very clunky. Yeah. So here, one of the things that you are going to notice, Andy, is going to be, so here, when you look at the bomb, you know, it might appear very natural that, okay, you have the routings, you have the materials, you have some of the sub-assemblies as well. But if you pay attention, and I was trying to figure this out as well, okay? So if you pay attention, the material, they still don't have correlation with your routing. Correct. That's okay? how it was originally designed. So now, but what that means is... It does a little bit there. The routing is along with the bill of material. No, they are at the same level. If you look at this, they are at the oh, same level. Oh, so you, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, so, so you have the material, and each of the material could have their own routing as well. 
but those oh. materials are probably going to have the, the those are the sub assemblies but the routing and your material it sort of don't have the correlation so now oh. even though i like the layout but then this is very comparable to your apicor this is very comparable to your netsuite <laughs> what, what what are the color coding there on the second column on the left? Do you know? Second column, which one? The green ones? Green, yellow? There's, there's first column, they're all blank. Second column is all colors on the left. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is very similar architecture as in four, where let's say if you are going to make any changes, then that is going to be unsaved change. And then you oh, go and, you know, you okay. hit the save. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's, so that's what okay. color coding means here. Oh, uh, okay. But so the overall design is fancy. It's designed from the perspective of a manufacturing person. But if you look at the data correlation, it's really weak. It's very comparable to your genius. Um, you know, Genius has the same data structure. Apicore has the same data structure. Natsuite has the same data structure. The only company or the products that are going to have the correlation between your routing and material are probably going to be just the in four products that what I have seen so far, at least in most of the products that I have personally reviewed. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I don't know how weak even with N4 that correlation is going to be. So now I can see, and I don't know if this is purely because of the performance reasons, because if they are actually going to have that correlation, I think MRP is going to take far longer because you have to maintain one more correlation, mm. okay? And it might break the whole system, so there could be. But I don't know, honestly speaking, I personally like to see that, but what are going to be the real implications if you don't have that correlation? I can see a lot of them, to be honest, because from the operational flow perspective, if you don't know which material belongs to which operation, then you sort of don't know. You are giving them, okay, these are the seven materials. You have four steps. Now figure it out, guys. Right. <laughs> you know, uh, which material. But if you are looking at very regulated industries, when you are looking at lot controlled items, you need to know the specific item that is going to be used on the specific operation. So I can see some issues there. They might be faking it. <laughs> they might be pretending in these verticals, but I can see a lot of issues uh, with these systems. Interesting. Now, uh, you know, they have done some very interesting things overall from the report perspective. So obviously, this product was designed when you had the real paper, uh, you know, as you walk on the shop. Right. So here, you know, you can probably expand your sub-assemblies and the way your reports are going to be printing is what you see is what you get. This is the experience, right? So here, if you are going to be expanding your routings, your report is probably going to be printing that. But again, even if you look at the reports, so here you are going to get correlation between your jobs and sub jobs, which is mind blowing. Okay. For the size of the product, if you are getting your correlation between jobs and sub jobs, that's great because you need that in a lot of different discrete manufacturing situations where otherwise you will not be able to schedule. So scheduling is really important. But the in my mind, I think if you look at the material planning and material control, that experience is going to be equally critical as well. In a lot of verticals, not every product can do that. Uh, the only products that I've seen so far, probably in four is the only product, uh, you know, that they, they, they can do that. Okay, so here, some of the very interesting correlations. Number one, if you talk about product classes, when you talk about parent group code, by the way, I mean, see, I want to clarify my comment there. I think the bigger products are going to have the same correlation. For example, SAP most certainly has those correlations when you talk about operation to your mature. Oracle, I would doubt because they are not really designed for manufacturing. Microsoft may have that. They do decently well in the manufacturing space. I think financial operations certainly does. Yeah, yeah, I, I would agree. With you. Business Central is not a manufacturing product. There's no way. In that. No, it's <laughs> not. But that's a whole other debate. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, exactly. So here, uh, you know, we are talking about the product classes and group code. Now, I called out some of the products. And if you remember, uh, we saw product classes. And group code, if I remember correctly, yeah. I think we saw in the case of either M1 or some of the, the smaller job shop centric products, they had the product class and group code. So this seems to be very category centric information that you're going to see in your e-commerce. If you look at Apicor, Apicor actually keeps those categories that are going to be from the marketing perspective. Now, these pro classes are very important the way some of the organizations operate. For example, let's say if we go in the tooling, uh, you know, companies, the companies that are producing either tools or tool parts, you know, Real something that goes, uh, exactly, exactly. So for them, the classes are very important because the reason why classes are really important is because their whole sales process is actually driven by those classes and the group code. So they are going to get the pricing. And for them, it's always going to be, okay, 
uh, are you looking at Siemens machine? Are you looking at 3M machine? And typically this part is going to go in that. And then you are going to have, okay, 3M custom fence. So that's my sort of product group that I am trying anytime I'm going to get a part. So for them, this categorization and the grouping is very important. Okay, in that vertical. I don't know if the other verticals are going to have that. But interestingly enough, I have not seen this correlation with the larger products, product group and product class. This is available in, in food manufacturing space. Uh, you know, you have the product group and uh, food. Uh, what is that called? The recipe uh, item family. No, family oh. group, family code. So their entire SNOP planning, they do it based on your item family. But discrete manufacturing, this is very interesting, to be honest. I mean, I have not seen this. Some companies use this. So this could be a process issue, the way they have been structured. Uh, but, you know, overall, this is very interesting that even made to man. Okay, so this is where the comment about the layers of the subassembly. So obviously, it is designed for the smaller manufacturing products, which means you are probably not going to have, let's say, five, six, ten layers. Um, you probably want, uh, you know, three or four. By the way, Andy, I think, yeah. yeah, I'm actually going to touch one thing on your comment related to the number of layers. I think you should have seen this track product. Okay, the number of oh. layers that you have in the custom cabinet uh, yeah. space, to be honest, oh my goodness. I mean, it's it's mind-blowing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the bombs are so complex because they go through a different process. They utilize a tool called BIM. Okay, so uh, that is yeah. building information management, right? Yeah, so that's yeah. a very different tool than your CAD. Mm -hmm. And typically, they have a lot more moving parts in general, you know, because their products are very different the way they are structured. You, you should... Look at their bombs, to be honest. Okay, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna rewatch that session. Yeah, it's very interesting. Uh, you know, and I never thought I was thinking. You know, this track is probably gonna have very similar appeal as your visual. Uh, but no, 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 no. That's a very different product. <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, yeah, and targeted a different, completely different industry. I exactly, and and in that industry, it could be challenging to implement the vanilla manufacturing uh, or the distribution product. To be honest, so that's a very unique industry. Um, so, yeah, so that's why Epicor is really continuing that. You cannot implement, let's say, Kinetic or Profit 21, and it's very hard. Even Eclipse is very hard. Well, so, what was that about Kinetic? You cannot implement these products in that space when you are talking about oh. uh, the kitchen distributors. The cabinet, yeah. working. Yeah, it's okay. hard. It's hard. You should watch that episode. Um, I will. Yeah, so here, now, this is my you know, complain about this product, okay? As I have mentioned that you don't have that correlation. And honestly speaking, I don't have enough information to comment how bad this is going to fire back. I like to see that correlation just because if you are going to go for the bigger, you know, organizations, you have to have that control. If you don't have that, you lose that visibility. So I personally like to have that, but I've seen too many products, uh, you know, that do not have that correlation. And somehow these companies are using it. So things are working. It's just that you're not going to get the insight or the transparency when you are talking about operational to material co correlation. Uh, this is the cost explosion view. And I am a big fan of this view, to be honest, Andy. Okay. You are not going to find this in even the bigger products. So here you are looking at every single material. What was the cost of that? You are looking at the standard cost, the actual cost. So you have the real traceability comparison. Okay. Now, if you would like to see, okay, let's say if you are using WF201B is your product and you have the quantity of 10. Now you want to see whether operation 10 is taking more cost because obviously you have to add the labor on top of your material, you lose that transparency because that data integrity uh, is sort of not built as part of the product. So the only thing you're going to get, okay, these are your materials. What is the cost? But what is the correlation with the operation? You can get, okay, what is the combined uh, labor cost for that operation? But you will not be able to maintain the correlation between your operation as well as the material. Okay, so some comment, and I was thinking that I will be getting a lot more positive reviews based on the product architecture. At least some people will appreciate that. Uh, that doesn't seem to be the case, especially when you look at the reviews, and they are very different. So here, I think the review is coming from Find a Real ERP. Don't buy this gold plated doo doo. Okay, and I, <laughs> <laughs> I think gold plated comment is coming from that yellow color. Of 15. So obviously they are very gold plated. There There's go. no question about that. But their products don't don't seem to be as gold plated, I guess. Uh, <laughs> uh, so here this company is 51 to 200, and my expectation was that this is probably the right fit for them. Okay. 
51 to 200 employees machinery. So let's review some of the problems that these guys have experienced. So they are saying it's a very old platform. And even when it was updated about seven years ago, so there has not been much of the development. Obviously, discrete manufacturing is not the target market for Affine. So obviously, they are not investing a lot of money. They are carrying it because they have customers on it. So they don't have a choice. Right. Okay. Now, even though the screens are looking pretty, but they felt that, you know, it still felt like we were in the MS-DOS world. And personally speaking, when I use Epicore products, I get the same feeling as if I'm using MS-DOS because, again, in the back end, you have the main frame. So even though they have figured out, okay, how to replicate that web experience in terms of providing those, uh, you know, multiple tabs inside your browser, but when you are actually using it, you are not going to get the same experience that you would expect when you are going to use, let's say, Salesforce or HubSpot or any of the cloud native applications. So that's where the real difference is overall in terms of the experience. You might be okay once you get trained, once you get used to it, you're going to feel, you know what, this is all great. No problem whatsoever. But that is the training. It might take six months to get used to of the product. Once you get used to it, then you might like it, if you, especially if you are using it on a daily basis, but you'll have a little learning curve there, uh, you know, because of the experience. It's not going to be as interesting. So here we are talking about, we requested that they have a warranty component. Okay, now let's get into the details. So they don't necessarily have that service component, the warranty. Component. So even though your manufacturing is going to be great, but if you are doing any sort of aftermarket, you probably will have a lot of challenges with this product. Okay, so this was designed for companies that are simply creating the product and shipping it. And then I don't know who's going to service. Uh, <laughs> but if you have to service as well, then you probably need warranty. So that's where I guess, you know, the complaint is coming from. So here he is talking about there was no warranty component in the system, so their credibility went out. They probably overcommitted that warranty is there. Maybe they felt that, you know what, you can implement warranty using custom fields, uh, you know. Or, or, or a work order or something like that. Yeah, I mean, typically sales pitches are like that, right? But once that's, you... <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's what they used to do with the visual product, same thing. Turn to use a work order, but it's so clogy. Like. Yeah, 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 it's really clunky. <laughs> so now M2M does not have reporting well, so they are complaining about the reporting as well. Aptine report writer develop their own reporting function. So there's a sim similar, uh, you know, approach what uh, your Info is trying to do. Info I, I think they use, they use they, a lot of their customers use Crystal though. Who? Uh, made to manage customers. Ah, so I don't know. I mean, maybe Aptine changed their approach as well because obviously these vendors they don't want to be dependent upon SAP because SAP owns no. the report now. Exactly. So they are trying to decouple that and they are trying to develop their own. So they might be using Crystal in, in four years to you as well right. until, you know, SAP owned it now. Before it turned into a competitor. Exactly, exactly, yeah. yeah. Uh, here we are talking about, okay, for part sales, M2M is not a good. So basically, if you are in the aftermarket verticals, uh, you know, this is probably not a product for you. Then you are going to be doing a lot of, uh, you know, field service and the repair uh, because warranty is not going to be there. Probably, they, probably for simple machine shops that really don't care about warranties and such. Well, so machine shops are probably not going to like this. You know, Andy, you know, they probably like something like Pro Shop because for them, what is most important is going to be the terminal on the shop floor. That's and right. I don't know if Aptim really has the MES capabilities. And that's a very different architecture in general, to be honest. Yeah. Okay. And that's where uh, some people like Apicore, to be honest. And the reason for that, even though you don't have data integrity, but a lot of those processes are going to reside inside MES. That's why MES, Apico does really well uh, in the manufacturing verticals. You know, the, the, the product that I've seen that does the best at MES is Plex. You are right, because it's MES, it's not ERP. I know. <laughs> if you talk to your ERP guys, they all of us, they hate it. <laughs> I know. It's, a, it's an MES system. <laughs> exactly. Know. Yeah, they put some accounting function there, but, you know, and supply chain, but right. it's not designed to be um, the, the, the core ERP. Yeah. So, yes, you are right. I mean, Plex has the best MES. There's no question about that. Uh, yeah, that's it's why Rockwell hard. actually bought it. Yeah. 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 Some more comments here. Uh, you know, I go back to the warranty segment of the program to help track expenses. So, obviously, they are complaining about finance. Finance is probably not going to be as strong with these products. The RMA flow, they are complaining about that as well. Again, anything that is going to be related to your B2B customer service, RMA, return, warranty, market. it's going to struggle so much. Uh, don't don't buy this for those segments. Um, here we have a comment from 2020, so which is not very old. They are talking about worst support and implementation of any software I have dealt with in 20 plus years in IT. <coughs> <laughs> so obviously, it seems like this person had the experience implementing some software. You know, that's how it sounds like. 
So here we are looking at, again, very similar customer. Here we are talking about electrical electronics manufacturing, 51 to 200 employees. So my mind is going to say, this is probably going to be okay for their vertical. But they are saying, okay, support, complain about it. Okay, that's not a big deal. And I don't know which level of support you are on. So I'm not going to comment on that. But let's look at the product, okay? So they are saying support of their product. There should be no outsourced tech support. However, they have started doing that. Lately, sure, everybody does that. Microsoft has outsourced as well. So I don't know where you are going to find a support. Again, work with consulting companies. They, that is the only way you are going to find the right support. But obviously, they are going to cost me. Uh, <laughs> so get ready for higher bills. So here, development team has no idea how to test a product or release patches in an effective manner. Upgrade was not until the 12th revision of the software. So uh, the whole release process I guess Aptin is very new in the cloud as well, to be honest. So I don't know if this particular experience is coming because of their cloud, uh, you know, migration. So most of the products that were trying to migrate to cloud, they all struggled with it. So maybe Aptin is struggling with that as well. And this is less than two years, all almost two years. Yeah, time. yeah, it's relatively newer. So I think Aptin is going through that process right now. Um, maybe their release process is not as streamlined, uh, but that's not good. I, I don't like it. Uh, now, 2017 M2M ERP unsolution. <laughs> Look at the comments. Okay, IT manager, Midwest, rubber services, and uh, you know supply company machinery, 51 to 200 employees. My understanding is going to be this is probably going to be you know okay vertical. So here we are talking about the management interface for users is not straightforward. And now if management is complaining about that, that's a real problem. And that's my problem with most of the manufacturing systems, especially if they are going to be focused on manufacturing. Your management, finance, supply chain, accounting function is going to be really weak in general. Uh, you know, the only thing that is going to be strong is going to be your manufacturing. If that is your critical success factor, then buy this product. Uh, managing permissions is probably going to be an issue that you are going to notice in every single manufacturing. Uh, okay, it doesn't matter which vendor you are going with. You are probably going to uh, struggle with this, uh, any of the manufacturing. Uh, it still has lots of issues that can cause significant downtime. That's really bad. Why is ERP going down? I don't know. It should not be good. But I mean, this could be on-prem as well. 2017, they might be using in that. So, you know, could be your own data center, uh, not Uh And the comment is, I, I don't think it is, uh, it is less suited for anything outside of manufacturing. And typically, the business models are extremely complex in general. Okay, it's very rare to find somebody who's manufacturing. <laughs> and these guys cannot even do up. So, which is very tricky overall. Uh, now, this is coming from the finance guy, machinery company, 51 to 200 employees. 2017, the reporting, so finance person is complaining about reporting as well. Uh, of made to manage is a bit of disappointment. We have purchased additional reporting software, and this is what companies typically do. They are going to utilize ERP, and then they have to get all of that data, jump into data warehouse, and they are investing millions and millions of dollars uh, in getting the, the reporting, and typically that all is going to be built as part of the ERP if you're buying the right ERP software. Uh, some more comments here. So here we have 50 or fewer employees for mechanical industrial engineering. And in my mind, I think that is the right vertical as well. So ideally they should get five star, but here we have uh, 1.5 star. Uh, but I don't care for those stars. What I really care for is the details. So here <laughs> they have a really funny comment. Okay, so M2M lends itself to great nicknames made to damage okay <laughs> made to mangle hard to ma manage that's crazy guys that's really crazy okay so now the other comment I think is, this guy's got a good sense of humor anyway yeah I, I i agree i agree there is zero uh drill down functionality in the accounting package okay oh. so this guy is complaining about that and i don't know what is the title of this this is 2017 though so ah <laughs> i don't think you can Build drill down and the uh, no way. Uh, okay. there's no way. If the product does not support native linking, then it's hard. Okay, so accounting is definitely a very weak area in general. Um, manufacturing traceability, I don't agree with this person, to be honest. I think it has really strong manufacturing and the operational and the costing traceability that you are probably not going to find in the other manufacturing. Accounting traceability, I don't like any of the manufacturing. Solid accounting functionality along with ERP tracking. So this for some reason he's saying accounting functionality is great, but traceability is not there. Now, I would suggest looking at other products. Okay, if you're looking for solid accounting functionality, obviously 
this is not designed for accountants and accounting and the finance people they will not like uh, you cannot drill down from one screen to the next all inquiries are reports instead of screen lookups it takes a long time to analyze troubleshoot issues i completely agree this is probably going to be a nightmare inventory management works well but following the cost flow is cumbersome i personally like the cost flow to be honest i don't know seems like something is not working so here this is 9 years ago uh, we are looking at new markets for diversification so this is the company and a lot of manufacturing are looking companies are looking for that so if you are looking for diversification you are probably going to be utilizing two different erp three different erp if you are acquiring companies with different business models you are going to be looking at many different products so again if you are a diverse business it's going to be really hard with these um, when we purchased m2m in 2007 we were looking for a product where we wouldn't have to modify every screen report to get the information that they the way we need um now uh, yeah overall i think it's very strong they have advanced scheduling the commitment so very strong manufacturing product but diverse business model it's going to be really hard some more comment here this is also from 9 years ago so i guess they they worked with a bar in canada and the bar <laughs> ended up developing every single report when the reports were actually there part of wow. the product can you believe that <laughs> so this is crazy obviously the bar was not as knowledgeable about the product so they ended up developing well, they wanted to sell a lot of reports exactly i mean that could be it as well right <laughs> i mean obviously a lot of development dollars i would love to develop reports as long as somebody else is paying for it <laughs> okay so i don't have anything else here okay so that's it for the session and the commentary insights well, it, you know, like I mentioned earlier, made to manage has been around since the 19s and back in those days it was a, it was a very strong strong product. Its biggest limitation always was the fact that the bill material and the routing were in separate tables, which makes it difficult to really calculate promise dates and shop scheduling and things like that, but it had a very strong following and a lot of companies liked it. Now whether or not it's it's still a competitive product i think is debatable but i know that apt is trying to uh, re-kick it off and get it back on the market as something but again so honestly speaking andy and i don't know how the shop floor guys to think about scheduling in my mind they don't care for materials as much as they they don't care sense. anything about materials exactly okay. and that's why these products were designed this way to be okay so you are right that oh, they care less should say not nothing they care less about typically they take ad hoc steps on the shop floor if material is going to be short then they are running around you know figuring out okay what can i use can i use something no. else i'm going to pick it you know so it's very can vanish uh, i would say you know that's how the shop floors typically you operate but if you are looking for very structured scheduling where you need to really predict okay how much material are you going to be needing at each step that's where the complications are going to be so depending okay. so uh, i would say 80% of the manufacturing products that i've seen they all don't have that correlation uh, they all claim it yeah but, but if you need you need a you need very experienced eyes to notice the difference exactly and by the way see if mes is not going to support the material and the operation correlation then even if you have as part of your erp system <laughs> doesn't matter <laughs> So yeah. that could be the reason why nobody cares I guess I don't know I mean that's very yeah, I don't know yeah so we have some comment and let's uh, look at these so Anders is saying the column view is amazing but I would imagine that customizing that data structure would be very difficult and does it break down when comparing multi level bombs it seems like you could only show the top level characteristics so Anders I think the comment that I'm going to have is most of the manufacturing products that I have seen that provide this kind of view they were designed for this so i don't think you are probably going to have this issue and you can probably look at everything inside that bomb it's not going to be just first level information it's probably going to be everything because that's how you know the people who manipulate bombs you know that's how they like to see it and if they don't have it they are not going to like the product so i don't think this is probably going to be an issue the product was really designed for this even though it's very small so one more football <laughs> <I think. laughs> yeah right so right i mean we can make a lot of money if we promote ourselves as football uh, programmers <laughs> andy final comments i've already said mine and i really appreciate you inviting me okay amazing so that's it for today if you join for the first time this was part of our industry series for which we meet every tuesday at 5:30 pm eastern we review one vendor or the solution so make sure you guys are going to be here next week we are going to come back with another solution on that note thanks everyone for dialing in friends
Thanks, everybody. I cannot thank our guests enough for coming on the show, for sharing their knowledge and journey. I always pick up learnings from our guests, and hopefully, you learned something new today. If you want to learn more about ND Pratico, head over to esoft.com. It's essoft.com. Links and more information will also be available in the show notes. If anything in this podcast resonated with you and your business, you might want to check other related episodes, including the interview with Rent Peer and Ben, who shares their insights into how to create a robust supply chain for an apparel business. Also, the interview with Narav Shah, who shares his insights into the process challenges of make to order manufacturers. Also, don't forget to subscribe and spread the word among folks with similar backgrounds. If you have any questions or comments about the show, please review and rate us on your favorite podcasting platform or DM me on any social channels. I'll try my best to respond personally and make sure you get help. Thank you, and I hope to catch you on the next episode of the WBS Podcast. Thank you for listening to another episode of the WBS Podcast. Be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcasting platform so you never miss an episode. For more information on growth strategies for SMBs using ERP and digital transformation, check out our community at wbs.rocks. We'll see you next time.